This week's Eye on a pre eye brought to you by Digikey Native Fruit is from ST. That's right. Yeah, what is this week's eye? Okay, this is actually, well, I was personally interested in this chipset, so I'm glad we're featuring it. It's the ST STM 32C0 series. Not to be confused with the G0 series. We're actually going to be talking about both, basically, although we're featuring the C0 uh, in this Eye on a PI. So um, ST had a really great. Uh, um, webinar slash um, presentation PDF. So I grabbed a bunch of slides from them. So that's why it looks like a ST uh, slideshow. But um, there's a lot of good info, in the, good info in these slides. So the STM32 C0 is STM32. It's a 32-bit microcontroller, but it's just, it's intended to replace 8-bit microcontrollers. Um, it's very cheap. It's very reliable, uh, and they're going to carry it for a very long time. It's got, you know, their 10 year, uh, manufacturing guarantee. And also, um, you can move from the C zero series, which is extremely low cost, uh, and fairly low power to the G zero series, which is, um, more powerful, faster, more pins, et cetera. So there's kind of like a transitionary phase there from the C0 to the G0, which uh, we're interested in because um, we think it might be able to, the G0 would be able maybe to run CircuitPython. So um, what would this be used for? Well, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll cheat and tell you ahead of time that it doesn't have USB uh, native support. And so it's really good for what normally would be called white goods or low cost um consumer goods basically anytime you need you know a microcontroller but uh you don't need usb you just need a couple timers maybe a couple adcs gpio maybe it uh, drives a small led matrix display or something or, or a tft display um and it goes inside of uh low cost goods or toys or you know consumer products uh traditionally you know what people still use to this day if you open up like a toaster oven or something it's probably going to be running a microcontroller with an 8051 core because uh these AP microcontrollers even you know this core from the 90s is still very popular um i still buy chips these days that have an 8051 core in them um they're very very low cost they're not super fast but like people are used to them like you know they know the 8051 it's 8 bits you can slam a whole bunch of peripherals onto it uh and go to town and um there's you know compatible cores that don't have um a lot of ip tied up with them and so you know they're again very inexpensive you know under a dollar basically for your microcontroller however um you know the, they're 8 bit uh so even though there's a lot of them and you know i just searched for 8051 on digikey and there's um 3400 different microcontroller chips and you can see they have built in lcd or led drivers or they have uh can bus maybe built in um they often have letters 80 or 89 or 51 uh somewhere in the part number um but the problem is is that you know you you're really stuck with 8-bit microcontrollers so the minute you have to do anything more complicated like use floating point numbers um you're going to have to simulate that because they often don't have a floating point unit or they don't even have, you know, they're 8 bit, 32 bits. So the moment you have any larger integers, um, you know, now your your memory, your flash memory is going to start ballooning because you have to do all this 32 bit math on an 8 bit micro. Um, you know, sometimes they have DMA, but usually not. Um, sometimes they have, you know, really nice peripherals, but um, something like I2S would be a challenge. Maybe they can do I2C. But again, it's all going to be an 8 bit uh, microcontrollers. Another thing, is that you don't get the benefit of, you know, with ARM Cortex, you have SimSys, which is this layer that is kind of unified along all the um, ARM Cortex family. So, you know, if you want to do a fast Fourier transform, for example, because uh, you have some data and you want to extract a feature from it, you want to run an FFT. I don't even know how you would do that on 8051. You'd probably have to like do a lot of fixed point math on your own, maybe find a library that you can borrow from. Whereas if you're using ARM Cortex, there's a lot of existing library code that's optimized for the ARM Cortex uh, chipset. Um, you know, the, C0, the, the M0 family, which this is part of the M0 plus. And then you, of course, can move up to the M3 or M4 uh, or, or even the uh, M7 series. So um, there is, you know, a lot of benefit to moving to 32-bit, not just because you have 
you know, 32 bit and maybe you have a floating point unit, but you get to take advantage of um, good compilers, good IDEs, good libraries, um, a lot of optimized code specifically for this family. Um, so this is where the STM32 C0 lives in the STM32 like portfolio. It's all the way to the left, right? It's low cost, it's low power. Um, below it is the L0, which is the low power version, runs at 32 megahertz. This one runs at 48 megahertz. So it's a little bit faster. Um, and then again, you can transition from the C0 to the G0. The G0 is 64 megahertz and has more uh, GPIO. And, and you know, if you want even more power, of course, you move up to the G4, Cortex M4, and you you, know, you want mega power, go to the F7 um, or H7 series, like very, very powerful chips that, you know, you can basically start running um, very serious real-time operating systems on. Um, this is the block diagram for the C011 and the C031 series. Um, you get a lot of good stuff here. I mean, it runs on two to three volts, so you can run it on a couple of batteries. Uh, one supply pair, so you don't have to have a very, there's not a lot of serious power routing or uh, decoupling. You don't need more than one power supply chip. Um, it has an internal clock, so you don't need a crystal. That saves you a little bit of money. Um, it has uh, some fairly good peripherals on the right hand side at 6 or 12 kilobytes of SRAM, 12 um, bit ADC. The ADC is surprisingly fast, it's like 1.7. Uh, mega samples per second, which is kind of nuts. Um, it is on 13 channels. That's normal to have it multiplexed. And it looks like there's four timers, uh, which is quite nice. And then uh, SPI, two UARTs, I like that. Uh, and one I squared C plus, you know, all the real time clock stuff you'd expect uh, and Cystic stuff and Watchdog that you'd expect. And of course, all the GPIO with pull ups, pull downs, interrupts, etc. So the, the goal here is, you know, if you've used Cortex M0s, uh, you know, a nice low cost one, it is nice. You don't have to have a crystal. You don't have to have a lot of routing. Uh, you might even be able to do your board on a single layer or a very simplified two layer board if necessary. Um, again, no USB. So that's the only thing that's missing from this. Uh, but otherwise it can pretty much do anything that your product would need. Uh, I said, normally you would use an 8-bit 8051 or an AT Tiny or whatever. Uh, you can do with a CM thirty two C zero instead. Um, for pin counts, uh, they make them as little as eight pin uh, in thirty two K flash, six K of RAM, or sixteen K flash, six uh, K of RAM, all the way up to forty eight pin uh, QFN or QFP, a thirty two K flash uh, or sixteen K flash, and twelve uh, K of RAM. So you can see there's kind of two, there's four options: thirty two and sixteen. Um, K flash, 6 or 12 K RAM, and then, you know, incrementing amount of pins. Again, you need more pin count, you would go to the G0 series, um, which will take you up to 64 megahertz. And, uh, and the lower pin count is pin compatible, apparently. Um, but as you go up, you're like, I need 100 pins, 68 pins, whatever, go to the G0. Or more RAM, for example. Um, again, here's another example. The pin, you know, apparently the pin is compatible, so... Um, you want 48 megahertz, you want 64, switch between the two. And, um, oh, sorry, this is the same image. So let's go to the next one. Okay. Oh, and then this is for the G0. I did want to mention because I, that's, I was kind of curious about the G0 as well. The, the G0 X1 uh, does have USB native and it has USB PD, which is kind of neat. I might be featuring this on a future INNPI. Um, I think that's cool that they built in a PD peripheral into it so that you can, um, for example, if you have a device that you power off of USB-C, but you want it to have nine or 12 volts, it can do that negotiation for you. You don't need a separate chip. Again, uh, saving you a little bit of money. There is a nice dev kit that's in stock. Um, actually, all the chips are in stock. So Good job. yes, that's right. What's that? Well, we don't usually talk about microcontrollers on INAPI. We slide into another universe where there's plentiful chips. Sliders. Yeah. Um, usually we don't cover my controllers because they're often not have been, they have not been in stock for the last two years, but, um, all the STM 32 C X series are in stock in the various packages and flash and memory configurations. They just dropped. So you want them, you can order them and get them. They also have, of course, plenty of this discovery kit, which I recommend. Um, it'll work with their IDE very nicely. And then, you know, you can decide again, because it's one core, different configuration of pins. 
and uh, Flash and um, RAM. You just pick whichever, you know, whatever your code compiles and fits into, uh, that's what you pick. All right. Available on DigiKey. Yes. Like, like seriously. Really? It's in stock. I'm not messing with you. Get some. Very right. cool chips that I'm, I'm actually, I'm very happy to see that, you know, the, with the chip shortage kind of releasing um, more parts are becoming available or, or starting to get new things, not just trying to get the old things. So this actually might be a good opportunity if you were designing with an 8-bit micro, uh, 8051 or Z80 or whatever, and you, you were like, I couldn't get these chips for the last two years and I'm going through a redesign. Why not pick up the STM32 series? Yeah. So... They have a video that's pretty good. Yes. I'm going to play it. And then we'll... Uh, new products. Play out. Yes. Line and PI, and we'll go run in new products.